Hi, I'm Jim, W6LG for Ham Radio Basics. Welcome to my radio room here on Wolf Mountain. It's uh, 60 degrees, beautiful day. We've had some really cold days uh, where it was in the 20s, so it's nice to have a warm day. Had a question come up in a number of emails, and the question is, what is SSB? What is single sideband? And the answer is complicated, but let's see if we can simplify it just a bit with what I know about it, which isn't a great deal. SSB is a mode of transmission, and as licensed amateur radio operators, we're lucky in that we have several modes that we can use. For example, uh, CW, um, AM, amplitude modulation, single sideband, actually technically it's single sideband, single sideband suppressed carrier, frequency modulation, FM. There's a ton of digital modes. Back to really basic things. Um, CW, AM, and SSB are kind of related and in the sense that there's sort of, one is sort of an offshoot of the other. Um, as you probably know, CW is basically transmitting a carrier or continuous wave, which is keyed with a key or in some cases a keyer or a bug, a semi-automatic key. And it produces from no signal to 100%. It's either on or off. It's been around for a long time. And in fact, uh, goes back to the early 1900s. As does the next mode that I want to talk about, and that's amplitude modulation, AM. <clears throat> I thought it had come about in the 1920s. Did a little bit of research. It turns out it really dated back to 1900. And a Canadian guy who really pioneered AM, even before World War I, there were some AM transmissions. The phone company was interested in that because um, it was a way for them to transmit voice. And in some cases, it would be done um, via uh, radio waves or maybe landlines. So what is AM before we get to SSB and how does that relate to CW or a carrier? The voice, basically you need about 2.7, 3 kilohertz minus 300 hertz is 2.7 kilohertz. You need about 2.7 kilohertz thereabouts to produce an intelligible, easy to understand voice communication. Now, Collins, some Collins equipment use 2.4. Some current equipment goes a little bit beyond that to 3.3. Talking about spectrum, that's where the phone company got interested in SSB, which was patented in 1915. So what is AM? How does that relate to SSB? It's in the simplest terms, if you produce an AM signal, there are a couple of components to it. One is a carrier wave, so that occupies the center frequency. On each side of that is the modulation, and as I said, from about 300 hertz to about 3 kilohertz. And it's on both sides, so when an AM signal is transmitted, it can be about 6 kilohertz wide. Now I could draw a diagram, but I think it's pretty easy to understand. There's a carrier in the middle, audio on both sides. One side is the mirror image of the other. And it sounds pretty good. So what does AM have to do with SSB? Well, the phone company had limited bandwidths either in cables or over the air. And with the invention of SSB and the, and the use of it beginning about 1915, I got their interest and so the first thing that was done is the carrier was removed from the signal. So you, you no longer had a carrier, you just had the upper and lower sideband with the carrier being removed and the carrier being inserted at the receiver and I'll demonstrate that in just a second. So that's double sideband which in the early days uh, of amateurs using SSB was what they used. Uh, they suppressed the carrier why is that good? Well, let's say you, you're running a broadcast station and you're sending telephone calls from one end of the country to the other. If you can remove that carrier, you don't have that overhead, all that power. Uh, it's a 100% duty cycle. 
Uh, it's there all the time. You don't have that. It's gone. And now you only have the audio signal in RF terms on each side of, of its center frequency. So that was kind of a cool idea. We've gotten rid of the carrier and now we just have the sideband. So now, but it's still six, six kilohertz wide roughly. So means were developed initially brute force with filtering systems to eliminate one sideband or the other. And we'll talk about upper and lower sideband in just a second. So now you've got the signal down to maybe 2.7 kilohertz instead of 6 kilohertz. So if you're the phone company or somebody military transmitting um, signals across the country, now you're occupying a lot narrower bandwidth as we do and you can stack more signals in a frequency range, which is really good. One of the other, so single sideband is an AM initially was an AM signal with a carrier removed and then one sideband or the other removed. So it's single sideband suppressed carrier. Um, upper and lower sideband, if you've ever wondered why lower sideband is 40 meters and 80 meters and upper sideband in the HF, generally used HF bands, why is it upper side band on 2015 and 10, irrespective of work bands and 160? In after World War II, one, um, and I got my license in 63, and there was still tons of mili military equipment that you could go into a sur surplus store and buy. Military transmitters like an ARC-5 were readily available, and hams were, who didn't have a lot of money in those days, were busy converting them to amateur use. So how does it get to be upper and lower sideband? Well, from what I understand, the ARC-5 had a frequency of about nine megahertz in that range. And the hams were injecting or adding to that five megahertz to get it to go to 14 megahertz or 20 meters. That generated a signal in the upper sideband. They were also removing five megahertz from that nine megahertz signal to get down to 80 meters and that produced a lower sideband signal. So as transceiver transmitters uh, were manufactured by commercial companies like Collins, Halicrafters, um, Hammerland, National, I can't think of all of them, but they sort of followed the outline that had been generated by hams using military equipment and that was lower sideband on 80 and 40 and upper sideband. Is there any real reason for it? I mean, is there any legal reason for it? No. And I'll, I'll demonstrate that too in just a second. So we had a, a CW, with, which is a carrier, and then AM, which had a lot of overhead, two sidebands and a carrier. And then the efficient SSB, which is better over longer distances by far, um, you can ferret out a really weak signal from the other side of the planet uh, that's on SSB. If that guy was, tra and I'm assuming it's a guy, if that guy was transmitting uh, AM, you wouldn't be able to understand what he was saying. I'm going to do a little demo using a, um, a Yesu um, FTE450. And uh, I'll do this a couple of different ways. This is my, uh, my demi load and I demonstrated it in a prior episode, but uh, let's just do a carrier. Uh, I'm going to change the mode to um, Well, I'm going to try to change the mode. So when you're transmitting um, CW, and again, the, the filament has to heat up. In this case, I'm actually pushing it in the FM mode. Um, it just produces a carrier and the audio would be each side. So there's a lot going on. When you switch to single sideband, uh, then the, um, uh, the overhead is, um, is gone and it's just the voice peaks or the modulation RF that, uh, that is being transmitted. As this filament heats up, it'll, it'll go a little more. So this is what, um, an SSB signal looks like, and this was the best way I could think of to uh, to demonstrate it. So now let's uh, let's put that aside, and, and uh, 
I'll move the camera over, do a little demo um, using the FT450 and I'll receive with, um, with one of the Elecraft K3s. So here we go. There's a little bit of a buzz and that's just a proximity of the, of the two transmitters. So I'm at AM and if you tune the, uh, the VFO knob a little bit each side, it really doesn't make much of a difference until you go this is B side band in there. Sorry about the hum, but there we are. Okay. After all, I am transmitting into a light bulb. So there's uh, uh, there's uh, AM mode. I'm going to change to SSB on the transmitter. So that's how you tune in a single sideband signal. Basically, you turn the knob until it sounds good. And if you're within 10 hertz, it's going to sound fine. If you're more than 30 hertz off, it starts to sound a bit strange. Um, so to answer the question, what is SSB? It's single sideband suppressed carrier. Was started out life in about 1915 at a time when receivers looked a little bit like this. And this is a receiver from that time, a crystal set. So imagine um, that was that was state of the art, and uh, SSB was patented and and on its way beginning in 1915 and really took hold in the 20s and 30s in commercial services. So um, we're we're lucky to have a an efficient means to to really communicate around the world because it, it's. Great for long distances. You can copy a single sideband signal that is quite weak. Anyway, uh, in the 1960s when I got on my I got on the air, there were a lot of guys still on AM, and there were turf battles on various bands where portions that were being marked out for AM and other portions for single sideband, and battles took place, and it, it actually got pretty nasty at times. Some guys um, had a lot of money invested in AM equipment didn't want to change over to SSB and really um, uh, were pretty vocal about it and a lot of heated discussions on the air. All that's gone away now. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, uh, please subscribe. If you have a question, post it below. Other folks have been great about answering questions who know a whole lot more than I do. 73 from Jim, W6LG. Thanks for watching. See you the next time.